Hi, uh, this is Dr. James O'Keefe, and I am uh, here today to talk to you about our uh, paper coming up shortly, entitled Alcohol and Cardiovascular Health, The Dose Makes the Poison or the Remedy. We feel this is an important paper uh, addressing a, an important topic for the general health of most Americans. Um, these kinds of issues that are relevant on a population-wide basis have particularly important ramifications for public health. So this is a review article uh, looking at the cardiovascular effects of alcohol. We looked at the uh, entire literature for the past 20 years or so and came to the conclusion that, uh, yes, alcohol can be good for cardiovascular health. In fact, it specifically reduces risk of all-cause mortality, MI, type 2 diabetes, and probably even dementia at small doses. That's where the difficulty comes in. We talk about alcohol as being um, a risk factor that cuts very deeply both ways depending upon how it's used. So when it's used in small to moderate doses, which is defined as one drink, up to one drink per day for women, or up to one to two drinks per day for men, it can be very helpful. The problem is this is a slippery slope that many people can't navigate. Uh, they start off drinking light to moderate amounts and end up drinking way too much. So the other equally important uh, um, conclusion of this review is that alcohol causes a lot of death and disability in our society. In fact, alcohol, excess alcohol, is the number one leading cause of premature death among males aged 15 to 59. That's a huge swath of the American population that um, is at risk for really bad things happening from excess alcohol. Specifically, if we look at the cardiovascular ramifications of excess alcohol, uh, atrial fibrillation is a dose-dependent increased risk. For the more you drink, more than one drink per day, the more uh, risk you are for atrial fibrillation. At 10 drinks per day, it doubles the risk of atrial fibrillation. The most common cause of reversible hypertension in America is excess alcohol use. When you stop drinking, the blood pressure normalizes within a few weeks to a few months. It is, a, it is a factor, perhaps the major factor, in up to a third of cases of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. It causes a great deal of other problems with the, car, with the heart as well, including things like uh, arrhythmias that we mentioned earlier. So, to summarize, alcohol, if used at all, should be done in moderation, which is up to two drinks per day for men, up to one drink per day for females. The best pattern for conferring the benefits of alcohol without incurring the downsides is a small dose daily with the largest meal, generally the evening meal. Red wine appears to be the best of the alcoholic beverages for conferring benefits and as I mentioned earlier the key is avoiding excessive use. One final point, uh, Mark Twain has a famous quip that says all things in moderation including moderation trying to justify an occasional binge of alcohol. Our review article and others show that even occasional binge drinking is cardiotoxic. So you can't save up your drinks and have all seven or 14 on Saturday night. So thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it. James O'Keefe signing off. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.